Hey guys, this is Comic Uno, and today I'm doing a review for part one of the DC TV crossover. So tonight, technically, Supergirl and Arrow premiered, and then tomorrow will be The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. So let's get started and talk about these two episodes. Now, uh, with this episode, why does everyone come together? It's because it's Barry and Iris's wedding day. And of course, it's a comic book show. And if you've read a comic in your life, you know that weddings do not go well in superhero anything. So the wedding does not finish after the Nazi versions of our characters from Earth X come and crash the party. So now it's the team and really all the teams uh, from all the different shows trying to figure out exactly what they want and who these people are. And that's kind of what the two episodes are about. And then by the end of the episode two, we get to see some of our heroes, kind of the main, main gang, uh, in Earth X because they have kidnapped our Supergirl because they need her heart to save Earth X Supergirl. And, and that's kind of the reasoning of why they're doing what they're doing. And, uh, you know, this is a lot of fun. Something I really think that this crossover improved with from the previous is that it actually feels like a crossover. I feel like the previous crossover, you kind of knew which show was doing what. You, you knew, it was like, oh, this is the Legends episode. Okay, this is the Arrow episode. This kind of felt a bit more cleaner. It did feel, of course, it started out with the Flash, really, episode it felt like, but... I really think there is a nice uh, shared time with all the characters. Now, I guess talking about which characters are showcased, if you haven't seen the episode, Supergirl, it's only really Alex and Supergirl in this episode. Legends, it's mostly focused on Mick, which was a real surprise, and I love seeing him. Firestorm's story actually is developed a lot more here, which makes sense because they, they did originate from The Flash. And then, of course, Sarah, because she's pretty much the main character of that show. But we don't get to see Nate, Amaya, um, Zari, which makes sense because they don't really know Barry. Why would they go to the wedding? They, they, went, they went with the characters that actually knew Barry. And with The Flash, everyone was included. Even Wally was in the episode. No Jesse Quick, though. Would have been nice to see some, some Jesse. Um, and Arrow... Um, also, uh, actually Diggle wasn't in the episode at all. I just noticed that Diggle was not in the episode. I am a little behind on Arrow, so maybe it's because of things that happened in, uh, in the show. I don't know, but he wasn't in it. Um, we get some, uh, glimpses of Wild Dog and, um... Uh, Mr. Terrific, a little bit of Black Canary, uh, but mostly it is Oliver and Felicity who are in the episode, and a nice glimpse of Tommy Merlin from Earth X. That was a nice twist. Um, there's actually a lot of nice arrow twists throughout the, the episode. We have uh, Felicity saying no to Oliver's marriage proposal, uh, which kind of makes sense with everything that's gone on in their past, but um, I love that it's Oliver really trying to make the chance. Felicity's like, no, I don't, I don't want to really be married. And I'm sure that's going to uh, be developed a bit more as the, the crossover goes on, and, and maybe she'll say yes in the end, but as of right now, uh, it was a no from Felicity. And then, of course, the Tommy Merlin surprise. I'm glad that we didn't know about that before the episode aired. That was nice, just having those scattered surprises. And then we also add that Earth X Supergirl and uh, Arrow are a couple, and, and that was interesting and weird all at the same time. I know a lot of people were like, what? That That's so shocking. I, but the words leading into it, I'm like, oh yeah, they're a couple. Yep, they just kissed. They're a couple. So I, I kind of caught on to it uh, from that scene. But uh, yeah, there there's nice surprises in between. I think they developed all the characters really well from each show, which is why I felt like this was be a bit more... Uh, about the crossover than just, all right, this is Flash and you got some characters guesting. Uh, it did feel like that, you know, Sarah was helping out Alex, kind of. <laughs> um, um, you get to see Iris and Felicity talk to each other, so you actually get to see the, a reasoning for a crossover for character moments, which is important for a crossover. So, those are aspects I really liked. Uh, Try to think if I left anything else out. Uh, just story-wise, uh, I 
I don't know how to feel about the Firestorm thing. I feel like they're kind of going back and forth with that. Just because they've been trying to develop uh, develop that so much in Legends Tomorrow. So to go back to Jack saying, well, I, you know, I want you to be part of Firestorm. I did like the sentiment, though, because Jack says, hey, you're like my dad. I, I don't want to lose you. So I do think by the end of the crossover, we will have a final verdict on what's going to happen with Firestorm. Also, what was nice, forgot to mention this, uh, the character that pops up in uh, Barry wedding. Who is that character? Is it like their future daughter? Is it maybe like a female version of Bart Allen? Maybe their grandchild? Like who was that? And hopefully we get an answer in this crossover. I hope it's not something there that they just like kind of tease and we won't learn until we see it on Flash. I would like to see an answer for that because I thought that was a nice, oh, interesting thing, you know? Uh, oh moment. So I did like that. Uh, and hopefully the, the wedding ends up actually happening because technically they're not married. So <laughs> They were, they were not married by the end. And I do like that they didn't uh, make Mick make uh, the wedding party forget what happened. Because at first I'm like, how does no one know that Barry Allen is a superhero? Because look at all the superhero action going on. Now I... I have to say, I don't know if Mick can get every single person that was at that wedding um, to forget. So I wonder in the end, maybe someone will know. But of course, you have to, have to use your suspension of disbelief in that moment. But there were some nice just character moments uh, scattered in between, like I mentioned, the Firestorm moment. Uh, more of the Arrow stuff was the Tommy Merlin moment, which really was great. Uh, and the Felicity and Oliver stuff, they tend to do that in every crossover, talking about their relationship. But that makes sense in this episode because of the Iris and, and Barry thing. And it was nice to see a, a bit from Killer Frost, because Killer Frost and Iris were sidelined in the last crossover. So seeing them in the forefront was great, and uh, having this kind of relationship between Heatwave and Killer Frost is a fun dynamic. Heatwave in general was really fun in this episode. Uh, I was disappointed that Theo was not invited to the wedding, though. Kind of wish Theo was there. Uh, trying to think if I'm forgetting anything else, because there's obviously so much that just happens in these episodes. Uh, I guess the only thing to talk about is the Alex and Sarah thing. I didn't mind it. I thought it was fun, and I think it makes sense with what Alex has been going through. I do think there was some repetitive conversation between Sarah and Alex with uh, the Maggie um, breakup, just because they have had those conversations already. So it's kind of weird to take up so much time in the crossover to have a similar conversation. But I did like, again, what they ended up doing with Sarah and Alex. I thought that was a lot of fun. And just in general, this was a funner crossover because it was more about the interactions and less about we have to go here and there and there and make everything kind of feel like a Flash episode and everything to feel like an Arrow episode. I think they did better with that here. So overall, I enjoyed the crossover. Excited to see what they're going to end up doing uh, with the next two episodes. Are the villains solely fleshed out? No, but it's still fun to see them fighting each other really. Uh, and again, there's some nice twists and turns in, in the crossovers, which I really wanted, and hopefully we'll get to see even more with the back end. So of course I will be reviewing part two tomorrow, so hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.